once again. Uh, we're live for the uh, February uh, 2015 uh, DNN Community Hangout, and uh, I'm, I'm joined uh, this month by a couple of uh, community members, uh, Brian Dukes and Francesco Rivola. And uh, Will Stroll will be joining us shortly. He uh, isn't here at the moment, but uh, I do expect him any, any minute now. Uh, Anyway, uh, thank you and welcome everyone to another uh, community hangout this month. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about DNN 7.4. Uh, we have a lot of uh, interesting news or new news about uh, DNN 7.4, which we just released today. So uh, Brian and Francesco are going to be talking to us uh, a little bit about that. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and, and take care of some of the, the, uh, the other items uh, that we cover every month. Um, and remember, uh, every month we uh, ask uh, the community for questions. If you've got something uh, that you want answered, uh, you can reach us on Twitter. Uh, just reach out to either myself or to Will Stroll uh, and use the DNN Hangout uh, hashtag. Uh, also, you can reach us on the actual uh, Google event page or on the DNN Hangout uh, page as well. So any of those ways, just leave them, leave us a message, and we'll answer it during the show. And anything we don't get answered in the show, uh, we'll try to cover in the next month. Uh, so anyway, there's been, uh, you know, January has been a really active month for us. Uh, I was quite surprised. We expected 7-4 to be locked down in, in December. But, uh, you know, the, the thing about software is uh, it's never finished uh, when you say it is. Uh, it's almost like it takes on a life of its own, and it uh, it decides when it's going to be done and, and ready to go. So, uh, so February or January was uh, very interesting for us, and I know it was uh, you know kept Will on his toes uh, as well. He had a lot of stuff going on in January. Seems like we just had a hangout a couple of weeks ago, uh, but uh, that's okay. They're they're awesome. Um, I don't know yet who the next speaker is going to be. We had one scheduled for February, but because of the dates uh, and, and the alignment with the uh, release, uh, we decided to do a release hangout. But uh, Will will put in the in the show notes who next month's speaker is. We're also in the process of putting together a virtual community uh, event where we're going to have a, effectively a one-day code camp, if you will, online uh, for the community. Uh, and we should be getting more information out about that in the next uh, week or two uh, as we as we start getting focused on that now that we're done with the 7.4 release. Um, this month, uh, like I said, uh, we've got with us a couple of, of great community members, and I'm, I'm very pleased to have them here. Uh, let's start with, uh, with you, Brian. You've been uh, in the community for quite a long time working uh, on the open source side of things. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, sort of where you're at, uh, what you do in community. Uh, yeah, I'm here uh, in the U.S. in St. Louis, um, and I have been working on DNN for um, quite a long time. Um, been trying to uh, enjoy the open source nature of it from when it uh, has been open to, to less open to, to more open so it's it's been fun to kind of get back in and be able to, to contribute code and see what's what's going on um, in the code base um, but yeah work work here at engage and uh, just uh, working on websites for all sorts of different clients built on DNN so what what kind of stuff do you do? Brian, what like like your typical day at Engage? Are you are you a hardcore developer? Do you do uh, um, requirements, product management, project management side? Um, I'm I'm very much a, a developer, uh, but I I do a lot of also training and code review and kind of trying to help um, bring up all of the developers at Engage to um, a, a level of excellence and. Um, so do do some direct stuff and, and a lot of kind of paired stuff with with lots of other developers. Awesome. So so is this like the only open source project you work on, or do you have others that you? Um, this for? this is definitely the the biggest. But I mean, as as I uh, run into things on any other project on GitHub, I'll um, get involved as much as I need to to get 
issues fixed that I run into. Nice. Well, thank you for joining us this month, Brian. And uh, also, let me introduce uh, Francesco Rivola. Um, I have the honor to uh, work fairly closely with Francesco. Uh, and Francesco, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and sort of where you work and what you do? Sure, sure. First of all, the honor, the honor is mine. <laughs> and very glad to invite me in this session. Uh, okay, so I am a app web application developer, a team lead in, in Sapien uh, solution. I've been working for past two years in the with the DNN engineering team, uh, working on both in the commercial project and also an open source part. Nice. So, uh, so is this like the only open source project you you worked on, or do you work yeah. on others? No, this is the only one for for now, at least. <laughs> so, so how has it been uh, working this closely or this deeply inside of an open source project for you? Because I know you don't have like, like you don't have the same relationship to the project as a as most open source developers do, right? Right, right. Yeah, I think that my approach is a bit different. I'm I'm working through an, a company. There is a a, a big relationship. A very good relation with DNN. I'm not working alone. We are a team here, and and it's very exciting. I have to say, and very interesting. Also, when you start uh, also working for open source, uh, there is always the the momentum. Then when you need to expose more your code to people, uh, but this is also addictive. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Brian and I can both attest to that. It's. Uh, it definitely forces you to think a little bit harder about uh, about the code that you're committing, and and, right. and uh, especially especially when people start seeing that uh, the code you committed uh, just broke a build or or broke uh, you know broke the latest release or the re latest nightly, um, you know it, it's one thing when when 15 people or five people on an engineering team. You know, see you did that. Uh, it's, it's another when thousands of people around the world can say, "Oh, Francesco uh, checked in another bug." <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, anyway, thanks for joining us, uh, Francesco, and I'm really looking forward to to what uh, you'll be talking about today. A um, couple of things uh, in terms of announcements: we do have a DNN Connect. Uh, 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 conference coming up here in France in uh, later this spring I think that's in May um, and uh, I'll be there as well as a couple other people from the company uh, hopefully we'll get uh, a bunch of community members together I know the guys in Europe are all anxious to uh, to get this thing going um, DNN Corp is definitely sponsoring again this year and in fact we just signed our sponsorship stuff a couple weeks ago um, so I know that they're busy working to get uh, venues finalized and uh, looking to get speaker uh, call for speakers out here shortly uh, and start opening some of that up. I saw that there were quite a bit of activity on the, the DNN Connect website last couple of weeks getting all of that prepped uh, and ready to go. So I'm really looking forward to that. should be a really great, uh, great event. It'll be right around the time of when we're planning our DNN 7.5, so uh, there'll be lots of great stuff to, to go over at that event. Um, some of the other things, I talked about the virtual conference uh, that, that's going to be coming up here shortly. Uh, I think we're going to try to get it done in March. It may slip into, into April, uh, but I think we're going to try to push to get that done in March. There's a lot of stuff to get coordinated with that, and Will and the training team will be, be working on that more here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, to get that really going. So that's really an opportunity for us to leverage Hangouts in a much uh, deeper and richer way than, than we are currently. Um, and it's also an opportunity for us to, to really uh, share some of this stuff uh, with the community. It's great every month to have these Hangouts, uh, but you know you only get a little bit uh, out of each one. So it'd be nice to have some really focused technical sessions uh, and get people like Francesco and Brian to come in and, and present an hour on a topic. Um, that would be, be good. Um, 
So a couple of things from the community side before we dive into the topic, and excuse me while I look at my notes here. Uh, so we've got a couple of uh, Forge releases uh, that came out last couple of weeks. I see uh, we've got, interesting, we've got one from Scott Wilkinson, who's one of the new DNN MVPs that was awarded uh, in, the, in the fall. Uh, and his is uh, integrating with uh, Evoke Social uh, and invitation and registration. So that's a really interesting module. First time I've seen uh, open source stuff uh, integrating with uh, with the commercial platform. So that's interesting. Um, also, Phil Becker had a new uh, a new DNN tool that allows you to do uh, management of your DNN sites on your local machine. So you can do things like clone them. Uh, stand up a new machine, things like that. So it just makes it easier to uh, work with DNN on your local machine. I, you know, I, I, for a long time had a, a number of PowerShell scripts that I use, but uh, any tools that you can use that help you manage and spin up and tear down uh, DNN installations uh, locally is is really really helpful. So definitely something to check out. Um. I also see Brian. You had a uh, quite a number of releases up in the DNN Forge recently. Why don't you give us a, a quick rundown on what some of those were? Yeah, um, I've released a number of JavaScript libraries, um, and then uh, recently uh, put out a blog post, kind of about what those are and, and why uh, we at Engage um, have started investing in those and, and uh, see that it would be really helpful for, for the community to, to start using those. So um, kind of um, at Engage, as, as we've started running into common JavaScript libraries that we've used, um, I've been uh, wrapping them up in uh, DNN JavaScript libraries so that we can uh, reference them from from a common place and not have to package them with every uh, skin and module that, that we produce um, but that we, we can have a kind of a, a shared place that, that those live so um, we've got uh, a, a big handful um, of yeah, just kind of random ones that that we happen to be using yeah, I'm seeing like less JS. I'm seeing underscore, uh, some things around Bootstrap. Um, definitely some some well used libraries. There's some some less less common ones like Tipsy and and uh, not quite sure what the Spectrum is, but uh, definitely yeah, some the in, in Spectrum is actually a a really nice plugin. Um, it's a color picker. Um, so you, you can use it either as, as a polyfill for input type equals color or just enhance like a text box. But it's, um, it's really nice it's, it, if you have a need to be um, having your users pick colors. Uh, it's been very, very helpful for us. Very nice. I also see that uh, Daniel Mettler has been busy again. Uh, the guy seems like he is constantly cranking out blog posts and... Uh, Somewhere in between writing all those blog posts, he apparently had time to do another release of Too Sexy Content, uh, uh, or 2SXC, as they now call it. Uh, I still like the Too Sexy Content name. Uh, I, I think it's a better name. Uh, and he also had like a, another image slider carousel app, um, because you can never have too many image sliders uh, for, your, for your website. Uh, it seems like that's like the... It used to be everyone everyone built uh, to do apps because those were like the, the 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 first app you you build when you're building an extension for something. And now it seems like everyone builds uh, image sliders or image galleries as as one of their first learning tools. So, um, but anyway, uh, check those out. Those are in the Forge. Uh, also, Chris Hammond uh, had a had another Hammerflex release uh, back in January, and I don't know whether we commented on that in, in last month's hangout, but. Uh, Chris does some really good work, and, and Hammerflex is a nice, really flexible skin. So, so give those a look. Uh, as always, there's lots of great stuff out in the Forge uh, if you want uh, purely open source stuff. If you want some more commercial uh, items, uh, definitely the store is the place to go. And I know we had some, some fairly big releases here in the last couple of weeks. And for whatever reason, my browser crashed and took the store with it. So 
Uh, I don't have those off the top of my head. I know Evotiva had another uh, version of uh, Backup uh, is out, uh, so that's always a good one to take a look at. Uh, and I see Chris Onyak had uh, a number of new modules out. There's one uh, uh, that I've been looking at, uh, this Data Studio. It's only an alpha right now, uh, but it definitely looks interesting. Looks like there's a lot of great capability there. Uh, uh, again, something that uh, I, I probably am going to take a look at and, and you know see how that uh, how that works. Um, you know, it's always interesting to see the areas that our vendors are focusing on uh, and and how those tie into the platform. So those are just a couple of the items that are out there. Uh, give them a look. Uh, you can always look in the forums in the community announcements uh, and and. Usually, you'll see a lot of vendor announcements, and occasionally, you'll see the the uh, Forge announcement in there as well. But uh, it's a great place to look to see when new stuff comes out, as well as going to the to the store. Um, all of those places uh, are are good. Um, so, with that, uh, what else do I have on the list for today? Um, Forum posts. Oh yeah, we had uh, we had this thing that happened earlier today uh, with a DNN release. So for those who don't know, uh, DNN 7.4. If you've been living in a cave, DNN 7.4 was released today. Uh, I can say that I am very happy to have that release behind us. Uh, it has been a hard-fought battle, as as Francesco knows, having seen. Uh, what's going on on the inside, and even Brian, uh, if you look at the number of uh, commits and pull requests and and code changes that have been going on even in the last month, uh, it's uh, it's amazing. It looks like Brian's having some of the same technical difficulties I had a little earlier. Um, but anyway, the uh, the seven four has been a really challenging uh, release for us. Um, in part because we we had some really ambitious uh, changes that we wanted to do for 7.4. Uh, and and often when you have big things that you want to do architecturally, uh, sometimes it adds some instability uh, into the, the development cycle. Uh, fortunately, we were able to get most of that uh, cleaned up before the release. There's still one or two items that uh, that we'll pick up in the in the uh, 7.4.1. Uh, bug fix uh, uh, package that will be out uh, in another month or so. Uh, nothing too major, nothing that there aren't decent workarounds for. Uh, but uh, definitely, if you haven't uh, checked out the blog post today, go to the uh, DNN community blogs and uh, check out the release, um, and you'll find lots of good information. One of the areas that I'm really excited about uh, with DNN 7.4, and this is something that's been very close to me uh, close to my heart for the last six months or so, and 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 certainly for a lot longer than that. But uh, last six months, it's really been something that I've been pushing for, working with people like Brian and uh, and others in the community, Peter Donker, Ernst Peter, and and, and many others. Uh, which is how do we get community back involved in a very deep and meaningful way? In, in development, maintenance of the platform, and management of the platform, and the vision, and where we're going, and what we're doing, um, and, and doing all of that out in the open. And one of the things that I'm really excited about with this release was just the level of community participation that we had. You know, it's, it's great to see that. You know, I know that there were lots of reasons why it didn't happen before. Uh, and and really, that's you know at this point that's water under the bridge. Uh, but it's great to see the community just respond when they've been given an opportunity. And one of those guys that that you know responded in a pretty big way, I think, uh, in the 7.4 release. And and he was doing stuff even before that. He's one of the community committers uh, on the platform, which means that he has direct commit rights to the uh, to the code repository only. Only four people outside of the N Corp have that, and we'll be expanding that in the future. But, but for now, Brian is one of those guys. Uh, very, been working with the the platform and the product for quite a while. Um, and uh, Brian, so why don't you tell me about some of the things that uh, that you worked on for seven four? Um, so I I guess the the big thing that we worked on 
uh, was the uh, updating the CK editor, um, HTML editor provider. Yep. Um, so, um, and that wasn't just me, that was all of us at, at Engage um, worked together and um, spent a, a day working on uh, kind of getting that into a state where uh, it made more sense to, to be the, the default editor in, in DNN. Um, and we're uh, hoping that that, that can uh, be uh, the actual case in, in a few short versions from now. Um, so so when, you, when you say all of us at Engage, you mean like the two or three engineers or four engineers or something like that, right? Just... Uh, we, we had basically every person in the office uh, for, for a day um, part of the effort. So, you know, some people were uh, cooking breakfast and, uh, you know, checking on people uh, for physical needs, uh, but other people were designing and developing and, um, you know, ev every single person in the office was uh, to some degree spending most or all or, or more than their, their full day uh, on, on that effort. So what I, what I thought was interesting was uh, that you had, the, so I saw check-ins during the, the process, of the course of the day or saw pull requests coming in and, and saw you processing them. Um, so what I thought was interesting was, so when we talk everyone in the office, we mean like everyone, right? I mean, like I saw yep. check-ins from Rich Campbell, uh, CEO there, president there at, at Engage, uh, Henry, and I don't know how to pronounce Henry's yeah. last name. So yeah, Henry Keenum. Yeah, so Henry, uh, and... and did I also see um, Rich's wife and, and Henry's wife were? Uh, yeah, they, they were on the, the Trello board that we had. They were doing testing and, uh, you know, wow. giving, us, uh, giving us a lot of support, yeah. So, you know, and, and when I shared that story uh, uh, inside, I can tell you that, uh, that there was a lot of, uh, a lot of eyes, not raised, but like, oh my God, that's awesome, you know, because it's like here you have a company that believes in the platform uh, and is willing to uh, effectively shut down your company for the day, right? Everyone's working yeah. on on this enhancement or these sets of enhancements, so you're not billing customers, you're not having other meetings, you're not doing all of this other work. Like, that's a, yeah. that's a pretty big commitment for somebody to do for their company for an entire day. Yeah, it was, I was uh, very happy that uh, the, the guys here were, were open to that. Um, and kind of as, as we reviewed, um, they were saying that they, they really enjoyed it and, and were um, trying to figure out the, the financials of it a little more strongly so that we can do it uh, more often and, and uh, be able to, to continue um, devoting our team here to, to helping the, the project uh, be what what we want it to be that that is awesome you know I know I had uh, I had hoped to be able to come down there for the event um, um, and travel plans just couldn't swing it but uh, certainly we will we will make it a point for the next event to, to be there uh, the, the other thing too is that you know I know that you guys knocked off at five o'clock in the afternoon and and so pretty much, you know, you got a full solid six or seven hours of coding in, right? <laughs> uh, some of the guys were, were done around that time. Uh, Rich and Henry and I and, and a couple of the other guys stayed up. And yeah, Rich and I did our last commit uh, at 11 or 12. Uh, that, is, that is awesome. Um, you know, and, and this is what I was talking about before when I said, you know that this has been an amazing release uh, from a community perspective, and this is just one one case uh, that I know of. I know of several others where people really stepped up and and made major efforts around improving the platform. And I know 
you know, from my perspective, I was a little disappointed uh, in myself and, and that we weren't able to, to quite get everything where we needed to to get the CK editor provider uh, in shape enough uh, to it, include it in 7.4. Uh, but I know that, uh, that uh, working with DNN Connect, uh, that we'll have it uh, cleaned up uh, quite a bit and, and have it out available uh, through the forge at least in the next several weeks. Uh, and then uh, look to include that in 741 or one of the, certainly by 741 we'll have it uh, available as an option in the platform and by 75 uh, the intent is to have that as the default option in the platform. So definitely looking forward to that and looking forward to, to what uh, you and Engage uh, uh, come up with for the next uh, hackathon. Um, and uh, we'll certainly work to uh, to get uh, others uh, involved. Maybe we'll get uh, reach out to the Zepian guys and, and see see what uh, what they can come up with. Um, so I see Francesco smiling down there because I know that they've got some ideas of their own about things they want to do. So it'd be <laughs> would be would be fun to see that. Uh, and I and I know I talked to the guys over at uh, Steady Rain as well. And I know they're excited about getting involved and, and doing some things around that. So I think that uh, engage that that you guys and and you in particular, Brian, and in, in, in getting the buy-in from uh, from Rich and and from Henry and and the others there, um, that 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 really sets a very high bar for other companies and inspires others to to get involved as well. Um, and I know that uh, that having talked to the guys here. Having talked to Will Stroll and others, you know that that people are um, in awe that you guys were able to pull that off because uh, that's that's no small feat. And thank you very much for that. Uh, if I haven't said it enough already in, in past events, uh, because it, it really is events like that, uh, community members like yourself and others um, that really make the platform work. You know, at the end of the day, uh, we need you guys. Yeah, and one one of our big hopes that that we have for that event is that it would inspire other um, companies to to be investing more in in the platform because it was um, as much as it, it was good for for the platform and good for the CK editor, it was also just really good for um, all of our folks here at Engage to be um, working together on. Uh, on that project and getting to know the platform more and, and um, it was uh, it was well worth it. Well, thank you uh, for for the contribution. So so beyond the um, the hackathon, which is awesome. Um, so you had a chance to do some other other work around the seven four release, right? So so you you so like tell me what you do as a community committer and what that is sort of what. What that sure. is. Yeah. So as as community committers, our our biggest uh, responsibility is uh, working through pull requests as they come in. Um, so as as somebody submits code, um, we're there as people who have access to um, the the core GitHub repository, so that we can say yes, this code looks good. It passed our tests, and then we can check that that code in. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely spend a lot of time kind of reviewing all of the the many emails that that I get every day coming in telling me about what different people are are submitting and and things that people have to say about it, and trying to keep up with all of that. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I I feel the same way. Actually, we set up a uh, a Slack um, instance uh, or, or signed up for Slack here, uh, and uh, I keep Slack running all day on my desk um, so that I can see what's going on in GitHub, what's going on in Jira, um, and and yeah, it's it's a constant stream now to see all the stuff that's going on, not just commits from our own internal guys. Uh, but also all of the pull requests that are coming in and, and the pull requests that are getting processed and committed. Um, and that's really awesome. And if you, if you haven't used uh, Slack, it's, a, it's a, not an open source tool, but it's a free tool for small teams, uh, fairly inexpensive even for large teams. I think it's like six or seven bucks uh, per person. Um, and uh, do you guys use Slack there, Brian? 
Yeah, we, we do. Um, and we started using it maybe six months ago and have really gotten hooked on it. Really uh, has kind of opened up our, our communication in, in a really fun way. Yeah, no, it, I'm I'm amazed at some of the integrations, and in fact, having seen some of the integrations that, that Slack uh, does, I've been working, uh, doing a lot more research and and just some some R and D playing around stuff around webhooks and and maybe thinking about what that might look like if DNN were to have webhooks uh, uh, enabled, both for consuming webhooks as well as uh, exposing webhooks. So. Um, definitely, uh, you know, always, always good to see what others are doing, what other platforms are doing. Um, but as a tool in itself, I, I, I personally, I like Slack because I can, I can watch these things and watch feeds come in, and it's just really good, good way to keep on top of stuff. Well, let's, uh, let's shift gears here for a little bit. We've talked a little bit about what it's, what it's like uh, working maybe from the outside uh, in community. Uh, working on the platform and and some of the stuff that that went on during the seven four release, um, and and there's a lot more uh, obviously than than just the, the the stuff the community committers do. Um, we had uh, in the seven four release, I think we ended up with about sixty three different uh, pull requests from community. Now those are just the pull requests. That we actually accepted. Uh, there's a number of, uh, of additional pull requests. We probably had maybe 70 or 75 that we processed uh, over the course of the release. Um, some we we rejected, either you know sent them back to the developer to to redo them for whatever reason. Uh, some of them we didn't feel were right for the release, but. Uh, it, you know, I don't want to minimize the effort that it takes these guys to uh, to to do a pull request, even if it doesn't get accepted in the platform. Um, and so it's still it's still valuable effort, uh, both as a learning tool for them about how to how to get something contributed, um, as well as how to work with the team to uh, figure out what the what uh, the platform needs. And it looks like uh, Mr. Stroll has finally joined us. Uh, welcome, Will. You're muted, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't say anything just yet because I, I knew it was muted, but uh, I was on a, a different tab, so it took me a second to switch over. Yeah, sorry I was late, but, you know, business is good, and when a client says, I need you, I, I unfortunately have to say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we handled it. Uh, Francesco and, and Brian have taken over. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to tell you, you know, on the air, but effectively, uh, you're out of a role now. Um. <laughs> yeah. I, I knew Brian would do that to me, but I haven't met Francesco yet. So uh, Francesco, yeah. So I wasn't sure if he'd uh, kick me out or not. But oh, okay, it's good to know. Hey, it's it's more time for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice to meet you, Will. <laughs> you too. Yeah, we were. Like we were just talking, I'm talking. Uh, I was just talking with Brian a little bit about the uh, about the Engage Hackathon and and uh, you know the the level of commitment it takes. Uh, for a whole company to uh, to get involved with something like that, I know, you know, you guys have done that uh, over at uh, Arrow. Not necessarily the hackathon, but certainly uh, it's a huge effort for a DNN con, whether it's put on by Arrow or or anybody else. Um, and and hackathons are not not any different. Uh, it's it's a huge commitment um, and something that uh, definitely is well appreciated in the community. So yeah, anyway, all those, um, oh sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, all those things are very, very. Uh, they take a lot. They take a lot of time, but they're very rewarding. And, and and the only thing that I was disappointed with with the Engage Hackathon was that in their breakfast they didn't serve hotcakes. You know, <laughs> a, a good marketing guy at hotcakes would have made sure that they had some. I'm just saying, I, I you know. Yeah, well, you know, uh, stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, so you know, back to where we were at. Uh, you know, for me, the 7.4 release and the community contributions and all of the effort that the community poured into that release was was awesome to see. But there's also some guys who were working on the inside um, who work 
uh, as contractors to DNN Corp. Uh, really, they work as part of DNN Corp. Um, uh, for the most part, uh, but but effectively, um, they work on the inside to to do some architectural things or do some big big uh, heavy lifting sort of things in the in the core platform. Um, things that we know need to get done. Uh, and one of the biggest uh, pieces that came in in the 7.4 release, uh, something that has been, you know, there have been a few people in community who've, who've asked for it over the years. Um, it, it's a relatively insignificant feature called Workflow. Um, and, uh, and I know, Francesco, that took you all of maybe a couple hours to build that. Is that, is that right? Was that something like that yeah, uh, yeah that's a few 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 hours <laughs> <laughs> so so you know will and I uh, discussed it and and thought uh, given the release uh, the uh, workflow has been for several years the one of the top if not the top uh, requested feature in the platform uh, you know that the community has really said this is what we need we need workflow. We need it at a baseline level so that everyone can access it, so that all the modules can can develop against it, so that it's not just limited to one module, it's not just limited to the commercial platform, but that it's in the, the open source platform as well. And uh, finally, finally, we were able to make that happen with the uh, 7.4 release, uh, thanks to the support of uh, Naveen and the support of Will uh, Morgan Weck, uh, and then uh, guys like Francesco and 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 his team, uh, who were working on uh, the APIs for that. Um, so one caveat: uh, seven four is workflow APIs only. Uh, so you can build you can build workflow for your modules. Uh, we don't yet have the uh, UI around managing. Uh, those those workflows, i.e., you know, building your own custom workflows, uh, that'll be coming in in a in one of the next releases. Uh, but the API is there, and, and you can the, the the UI for managing which workflows and, and the workflow steps is fairly fairly small. So so I expect some module developers will will build some of that in, just as it was built into the HTML module before. Um, Francesco, why don't you talk us through a little bit about what the workflow API is and what it does for us. I know you you had you've got a, even a demo for us today, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a very quick demo. Some code, a sample, not not too much. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen, guys? If your screen's all black. Oh, yeah, we're seeing it yeah. now. Okay. Can you see the PowerPoint? Can you see it now? Yeah, I see it. Yep. I think that it's a bit slow, the, the network right now. Anyway, <clears throat> let's start. Um, this is a brief introduction. Uh, to the workflow API that is introduced in 7.4.0. So what I'm going to do is just give you this introduction first, then talk up a little bit about the API at class level, and then just let's see some code that is the best thing to do. Okay, can you see now the workflow glossary slide? Because I think that is is a bit slow. Yeah, yeah, it's refresh. up there. Okay, so let's start with a, a quick um, glossary, right, a terminology. So the workflow is a process that allows us to perform uh, changes and transformation over an item. Um, a good example could be a publishing the content of this item. Um, the workflow is composed by states, step or stage, we can call it in a lot of ways, that basically are, are um, a sort of step uh, atomic stage of the item inside the, this workflow process. And then we have a f uh, several action for the workflow. So we have an action when we start the workflow, when we discard a state, 
this means then we go back from to the previous state when we complete the state so we can we go forward and also when we discard the entire workflow uh, or when you complete the workflow for example in the example of publishing content complete workflow could be publish the content um, so in 740 uh, we have provided workflow support for content item you already know what content item is in the platform, so I, I'm not going to explain it uh, too much. And one of the characteristics of this workflow is that it is a linear workflow, customizable in n states. So this linears mean that mm, you is not a too complex workflow. You cannot do if you cannot do ramification. It's just a linear workflow. So you can, for example, this is is a diagram that show an example that you have a draft. Uh, you submit in a first step of review, then you approve, you reset, you can move back and forward, and finally you publish the content of your of your work of your item. Out of the box, uh, the workflow API comes with some of feature out of the box, so the developer does not need to carry on to develop its own uh, f uh, feature. This feature are system notification, right? There is already uh, in, when you start a workflow, when you move the workflow to the other, the next step, uh, all the notification are already work in place for people that start or submit the workflow, administrator, state reviewers, and there is also a possibility to customize the the text, the body and subject used. Uh, for this notification, and this is based on the content item type that you are using, that you have implemented for the workflow. And also, we provide a login tracing uh, information that is stored when you move item between the states of the workflow, right? So you can already know who, which people who has started the workflow were approved uh, and when has been moved the item to the next or previous workflow state. Feel free to interrupt me if you have any question. Okay. So, um, workflow action. Uh, as we have commented before, the workflow action are uh, five right now. So there is a workflow when, you, when we start the workflow. So we start when we move the item in the first state that could be draft, for example, for a published workflow. And then we have uh, other item that uh, event that happen on this on a state. So when you discard or when you complete a state, and then when you complete the workflow or discard the workflow entirely. And on each of these actions, we have exposed some events that a third-party developer can uh, implement its own behavior that are on state changing and on state changing, right? Also, when we when you are in platform in 7.4.0, by default, you are going to have three workflow in place, what we call default workflows, that are intended by for content publishing, right? Uh, one is the direct publish. That means we have only one state that is published. That in in practice mean no workflow. Then we have save draft, that is composed by two states, draft and published. That basically is a workflow that normally in a content in a content publishing uh, behavior could uh, be done by one, one user, and then we have the content approval that have uh, has three states: the draft, ready for review, and published. These are default workflow, but you can create a lot of more workflow, right? With um, n steps. Yeah. So 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 back on those workflows uh, for a second, uh, Francesco. So what you're saying is that. For anyone who wants to build workflow into their module today, uh, that there's already states defined and workflows defined that they can just use. They don't have to build any UI for managing or creating workflows. They only have to say, "Hey, use this workflow. Use the the direct publish or use the the approval workflows." Right. 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 Maybe what you need to do with the APIs. At least for the content approval, for example, you can set up the, the, the user that have the permission to review, right? But this is up to you. You can do the view through the API, and you don't have to create a new workflow if you if these three workflow work for you. Okay. 
Okay. So let's go ahead. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the API overview. So the namespace for the workflow is the new entities content workflow. So you can find under this uh, namespace all the classes, entities, uh, etc. stuff that uh, we have implemented for the workflow. And in this diagram, you can see the, the main component of the workflow. So the first one is the workflow engine. It's the most important and probably the, the component that where third-party developers are going to, to work most. And is the class responsible to, to start the workflow, move the item back and forward, right? And do all the iteration, right? With, the, uh, with your items that uh, go through the workflow. Then we have the workflow security. Is a class responsible to check if you use a state permission? Maybe you can use this API for does not expose some button because you don't want that the user can publish or can do something if does not have permission to review, right? Uh, after that, we have the workflow logger. The workflow logger, as the workflow security already work inside the workflow engine, but you can use that to get read the log of the workflow or also add more information, maybe some custom information that you want log because you have some needs to, to log more information that the information that are already logged by the workflow engine. And finally we have the iWorflow action interface. This inter the interface is posed and the third party developer need to implement if they want to customize the notification message and also uh, if they want to subscribe to the workflow action event that we have discussed before, right? And finally, we have a bunch of class manager class that allow you to, to do crowd operation, right? This will be probably the class that uh, will be used by the, the, the model, the, the UI that Joe talked to, that to give a, a managing for the workflow. So the, with the workflow manager, you can create a workflow, delete the workflow, update. You can do the, the same with a state, with using the workflow state manager and you can register the iWorflow action, get the iWorflow action with the workflow action manager. So as you can see, there is a lot of small classes, right, following the single responsibility principle, interface segregation, that try to have its own role in the, in the big picture, right? Okay, so how to implement so, workflow? So real briefly, Francesco, because one of the questions that I think uh, that uh, some people have is, you know, the workflow API that we have, is that completely new or is that based on something else or sort of where did that API come from? Like, where did the, the ideas around that API come from? Okay, so um, our, first, our first version of this API uh, was introduced in 7.1 when in a first iteration. So what we have done is basically uh, redesign the API in, in a new way and we tried to fit some necessities that w was in the book product, right? Right. Uh, so, yeah, because I think that's, that's kind of an important uh, point that I think, uh, you know, while while we had some rudimentary, very rudimentary workflow type capability in the platform uh, before and have had for a while, uh, it wasn't really well documented or wasn't well exposed. Uh, it was a fairly incomplete API. Right. Um, and it was used in a couple of different places, but, but it wasn't really robust enough for, for most people. And then we had this thing that was in the, the HTML editor in Pro, right? Um, and and this sort of merged the two of them and, and took ideas from both and sort of then merged them both around content items, right? So right. effectively, it's the best right. of both worlds. Right, right. And the idea is that if you define a workflow today, you don't need to define a workflow that is only used for a content item type. You can define a workflow that is used for different content item type, right? If this fit your 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 needs, if have the maybe five step for example, and the reviewer are the same people, they can with the same workflow you can then work for with a for a blog entry, for a article, for anything, anything that you need, right? So and this is not implemented at a module level, 
right? It simply is in the core and can be easily extended to to any content height. Nice. So, so we're. Uh, I just want to bring this back a little bit for maybe some people that aren't like well versed in this type of thing, which is. Um, when we talk about workflow, um, you know, what kind of things would a developer consider putting in workflow? What are some good examples of, of what they should be doing this for? Well, uh, a, a publishing is a very good example. So maybe you have, you need to, you have a model. Um, in, in the example that I'm going to show you, I just used blog. Entry like a, but it could be task, could be everything. So maybe you need to uh, when you when you create an entry, you want to that the entry is reviewed, right? So maybe uh, you need several step, right? Maybe the first step could be uh, I want to check the grammar, the spelling, the if the English is correct or Italian or Spanish, anyway the language, and then you want maybe some other guy that need to review the uh, the policy, or, or um, yeah, any any operation that maybe involve a team, right? A team with different roles that where the final result is publish the content with a quality, with a certain certain set of uh, characteristic. This is a good example. Other example could be try to change the state of the item, maybe process an order or or other process that imply uh, a set of steps, right? As we have commented that at this moment, in this first iteration, is a linear workflow, so you, do, you cannot do ramification more complex scenario, but everything that is linear can involve a, a transformation of the item to a, a final step. Good works. You know, one of the things uh, when I taught, when I think about workflow, um, and, and I know this is probably uh, close to Will's heart, you know, is that I, I worked on a couple of different e-commerce systems and often, like in e-commerce, you have to kick off a workflow when an order is processed uh, because you may need to have some notifications or have some things happen in a, in a back-end order processing system, whether it's, you know, going to the warehouse to, to have them pull items and and get them ready for shipping or or any number of things that happen on the back end, right? So even those sorts of workflows are supported in, in this workflow engine. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, this is a good example as well. So when, when somebody implements this, um, are they, so, so like, you know, well, I guess we'll choose uh, um, workflow. We happen to have our own workflow in, in, in hotcakes where there's like 12 different steps. And so, but the, in this implementation, um, somebody would be able to define whatever the steps are and, and somebody else would take action upon it. This is the type of workflow that we're talking about, right? Right. Okay. And, and, and so in those particular states, when a developer is taking advantage of this, they, they, they would probably set up their own workflow that is basically a default, right? Like, let's say there's an e-commerce workflow and it has those 12 steps or whatever it is, um, and, and, but somebody would be able to add their own to it, and potentially, right, as, a, as an administrator? Yeah, yeah, they can add multiple definition of workflows. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I understood. understood oh, no, no. I think you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 With the workflow manager, you can create multiple workflow. You can set up the. As as Joe mentioned, there is still not a UI that admin can manage this, but it can be done at the moment in code. Um, so, so as a call to the community, it might be a great idea for somebody to submit a pull request to get us some sort of a workflow scaffold, workflow scaffold, or something out there. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So, and in fact, I'm I'm working on some mock-ups for that for uh, seven five, and and we may be able to get something a little bit sooner than that. But um, certainly by seven five, uh, we'll have we'll have a workflow UI uh, to deal with workflow state management and workflow management uh, as part of that. But um, you know, I'm I'm really excited just to have the APIs there because without the APIs, you know, UI is sort of meaningless. So. Uh, we got step one done, uh, and and now we can focus. Maybe maybe that'll be the next uh, 
uh, hackathon that engaged us. <laughs> yeah, and, and this also this API is a first iteration, so I think that can grow a lot with the community, and, and is the first step, right? Is the first entry. And then I, I guess the what? next step would be for the document, or excuse me, the education group. Uh, maybe somebody can that's already in it, or maybe somebody that wants to join it. You can, um, you know, help define some, uh, you know, useful ways to get vendors to get on board with using this instead of their own pr proprietary workflows. You know, what would be cool is if we had like some demo code, some really simple sample mm -hmm. code that could like walk us through. Uh, how to do that. Wouldn't that be awesome, Francesco? Yeah. Jeez, would be. That sounds like a great segue. <laughs> so let, let's move on <laughs> on, the, uh, on this part. Okay, so yes, what I'm going to, what I would like to show you now is some code, right? It's, it's just an example, it's not a complete scenario, it's not a complete model, uh, and give you all some information to how implement the, the, the workflow for in a model, right? So the first thing that you need to do is create a content item type for your model, at least, or maybe you already have the content item that you were working on, you need a content item type. And then uh, you need to implement a register of the five workflow action, right? Implement the interface, it's a very small interface, and you can implement it for the, the five action. And then start work, use the workflow engine, right? To, to manage the states of your content items. So let's see some code, let me exit from here. Let's go to the Visual Studio. Let me zoom a bit here. Can you see my code now? Can yeah, we can it? see it. But Joe doesn't know he's on mute. Yes, I do. It sends a, a little yeah. message to me to tell me I'm on mute. OK, so here we are in the business control of our model. And in the upgraded model, when we stole the model, uh, what we're going to do is create a blog entry content type, right? Also, we have this content type. Uh, we have the content type ID, so we can register the word fluxion. We can do that using the word fluxion manager, and we need to do that five times, right? I'm going to do that five times, and basically this is done for uh, for the five action: complete workflow, discard workflow, complete state, discard state. This is a code that I need to do the first time, and then I can forget. And so let's have a look at how the workflow action looks like, right? The implementation of the AI workflow interface. Uh, let's have a look at the workflow complete action, right? So there is only three methods that you need to implement. The first one, the first one is uh, on state changing. So basically, this uh, the workflow engine calls this method before complete the workflow. In this case, we are implementing the workflow complete action, right? And then there is a on state change it. So this done. Hey, Francesco, the, can you uh, zoom in on your code a little bit, please? Yes. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. No problem. And on the state change it, what you can do is uh, perform some action when the workflow is complete. So in this case, we can have a, a call a controller that publish the blog entry in this example, maybe log all the relevant information using the workflow logger, right? And finally, what we need to do is implement the get action message, and this basically is just return a new action message with the information that we want to customize the notification and that is sent to the, in this case, to the, to the user that has started the workflow, right? Because here we are on the last step. Uh, so in this case, we can just set the subject and the body of this notification. This is going through the system, the platform system notification. Uh, here we can personalize the, the message, right? This is just a quick example. So, um, how we can move the item across through the workflow, right? To do that, we need to use the engine, as I, we have, I discussed previously. And to do that, I create a, an example of workflow controller, right? And I expose three methods using under the, the workflow engine. The, there is a start workflow. So this is the first step to, to put an item into the workflow process. So in this example, I take an input a content item. 
I'm going to, for, for this example, I just take the first workflow that I have in, in, my, in my system. And this I, I'm doing this using the workflow manager. And then just I call the workflow engine, start workflow, right? It's very simple. I do not have to do too much stuff to do that. So this or is is going to log the information when you start the workflow. It's going to send a notification to the user that has started the workflow. It's going to do uh, your action that you have implemented in the in this case in the workflow start action before uh, complete the operation after the operation, uh, and then uh, this move the item in the first day in the first state of the workflow. So when then you want to move the uh, the item in the next state, you what you need to do is just com call the complete state uh, in our workflow controller, and this can be done very easily. You have an input parameter that is a content item. You could have a, a comment. This is optional, and you the only thing that you need to do is create a state transaction DTO. Right, and you set up some few parameters: the content item ID, the current state ID. This is also important because in this way the engine is going to check if maybe if if the the item is still in this state because maybe in the concurrent scenario the item has already been moved or back or forward by another user. Or so in this case the the system can say you can throw an exception and say. You have to refresh if the item is not is not in this state at the moment, and then just work call the workflow engine complete state, and that's all, right? So the system is going ready to to move the item into the next step. See if the last step, if the so in this case we'll call also the workflow complete action, and to discard the state that is basically moved back to the to the previous one is is simple like the the other complete state option that is just create as another state transaction that is the same structure of the previous one and calls this car state instead of workflow state. This is going also to check permission for the current user is going to do uh, all already in the box. And this basically complete the sample. Do you have any question? Or I know that when you post calls, you have always more questions. <laughs> so is yeah. this a working example, or, or is this just um, yeah, that's just for the purposes of a, a demo during here during yeah. this uh, hangout? Yeah, this is just a, a code example. It's not a real module. You can see that I didn't have nothing. It's just a, a code example, right? Got it. Got it. I think that no. we will we will probably work on, on more information and more documentation for for ever more an idea to how to implement this. This is just an overview, just to have an idea to what you can do, how how the interface is and how the code should look like. And and I definitely appreciate that because you know it, sometimes we can we can build out these really complex examples that do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but when you're first learning and first getting a taste of something, it's it's good to have something that just sort of shows you the bones or the structure of what you need, um, so people can get a high level understanding of it. And then then we can create some some more in depth examples, and and certainly uh, those will be coming. There is a uh, a placeholder at the moment uh, for for uh, uh, getting started with DNN 7.4 up on the wiki. Uh, for developers, uh, and we'll get some more information in there um, on uh, on using the workflow engine. But uh, thanks for thanks for the the demo and and putting that together for us today, Francesco, um, and uh, and for joining us. I think uh, workflow is something that I know a lot of people uh, have been have been looking for for a long time. Uh, and it's good to see us, you know, start to make progress on that and start to deliver uh, key pieces of that. And, and so I'm definitely looking forward to starting to play with that in the next couple of weeks as I get uh, get uh, freed up a little bit from the 7.4.0 release. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you very much for your, 
for your presentation today. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and and cool. I, I like how uh, the, it looks uh, very streamlined in terms of how you could you know, put it together and, and use the different states and, and whatnot. I, I enjoy that part of it because there's been many there's been many APIs in the core. Let's just be honest. You know, <laughs> over the years, that not all of them are that straightforward. <laughs> Some yeah. of them may, may not still exist. Yeah, the, go <laughs> yeah, the goal well, is. Yeah, the goal Go ahead, is to keep it, keep it simple, right? Uh, maybe it's not perfect as it, as all the first iteration that you do are not perfect, but the the goal is this: is single responsibility principle, keep it simple and 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 get feedback, right? This agile development. <laughs> well, but even though you know, and I know you talk about keeping it simple. Um, that doesn't mean that you can only do simple things with it, right? And that's that's the important part. It it's got to be simple so that you can understand it, uh, but it still needs to have enough uh, enough oomph there, enough uh, enough weight to it that you can actually do some serious workflow, uh, solve some serious workflow problems using the API. Um, and, I, and I think you guys have done a, a very good job of, of doing that on this on this release. Uh, and and I know that uh, the community now uh, will be able to iterate on that uh, quite well. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what 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 the community develops as a result of that. Me too. Me too, Joe. <laughs> so, Will, I think that's about it for us for today. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and, and start uh, wrapping up here. I know we've got uh, a lot of stuff to digest from today. Um, there's still a, a, a release out there for people to go play with uh, um, and they can look at the last couple of blog posts I've done to, to get a little bit of information about what's in the release. Um, certainly Workflow API is one of them, but there's, there's lots of other items uh, in there. So. Yep, yep. Um, so next week we, or excuse me, next month we have Jared Shockey. I, I know we've uh, moved him from this month. Uh, it, it, was, it was for a good reason. Though. I mean, this is a, a pretty cool release, uh, especially. I mean, uh, I can't. I mean, you've said it quite a few times, Joe. But but uh, you know that, that was one of the things we asked for years ago. Is is hey, workflow should be part of the core. <laughs> uh, it, it, and, and, and it's great to see that there. It's great to see, uh, uh, you know, the simplicity of it. And, and, and uh, you know, Francesco, uh, I, I thank you for, for showing us that. Um, but next month, uh, when Jared uh, joins us, we'll be talking about DNN and Azure. So uh, that'll be an interesting topic. He's a, a super passionate guy about uh, pretty much anything Microsoft. Um, so uh, he, he's probably going to come with a lot of information uh, about DNN and Azure and, and how that's going to uh, you know, impact uh, our lives. Um, uh, I want to thank Brian as well for, for joining us and, and uh, you know, smiling on the camera here and there and, and, and contributing to the conversation. Um, and was there any other leftover questions, Joe, that we need to address real quick or no? Uh, I think there were a couple from from uh, Jonathan about using uh, workflow in the core system, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I think we want to look at that. We certainly eventing is something that has been uh, talked about for a long time, and and how we build events and and different things in the system. I'm not quite sure we're yet at the point where we want to throw a workflow in there. We may expose an event and let different people uh, wire up workflow if they want it. Um, I, I think that's uh, certainly something that's that's a valid uh, request and there's lots of different thoughts on that. So um, I had had some thoughts early on about uh, eventing and web hooks and how we might be able to use that and we talked about that a little bit at the start of the show. So I, I definitely think there's going to be some sort of eventing uh, mechanisms added to the core platform uh, here in the not too distant future. Um, but the great thing is it's open source. So if any <laughs> community member, hint, hint, Jonathan Shuley, uh wants to uh, wants to work on that feature, you know, I am all for uh, all for that happening. So uh, uh, maybe maybe that'll be a great uh, great contribution we see come in for for DNN seven five. And I'd like to point out that I've already participated in that particular update by adding that voice item to the DNN software site. So 
uh, you know, so uh, hopefully somebody else can continue to do that participation. <laughs> but that that's been one of my main uh, uh, my main uh, gripes over the years is is not being able to plug into certain things that happen, you know, such as hey, user logged in. Well, I might want to perform an action on that without replacing an entire provider, right? Um, so I'm very excited about that as well. Uh, I, I'm probably personally more part passionate about that coming out than uh, than workflow. I can't wait for that. Yeah, and you know, I think. I think 7.4 was a was a good opportunity for us as a community to sort of figure out some things about how do we how do we get contributions into the platform and, and how do we process them how do we get how do we deliver them in a way that makes it easy for Brian and Peter and some of the other committers you know to process those and say yes this is something that that's needed and and for us to talk about that on the architecture team and and say yes, this the, we definitely want this in the platform, and and for us to get that in, I think that's the the thing that we've been missing for a long time is, you know, there's always been a desire to get stuff in. What's been missing is is what is the process? How do we put a process in place that makes that easy, uh, and that that sort of breaks down barriers and and really simplifies that. And I think with seven four. Uh, if you didn't see my blog post from last night, I'll, I'll reiterate it again. You know, it has just been amazing to watch over the last three months uh, the way the community responded once we once we knocked down some barriers to to participation, um, and and we're seeing numbers continue to rise month over month. Uh, I think uh, our, our our January numbers are. Are about the same as where we were at in December, but I also know that we've got some big items coming up uh, that people are working on for 7.5, uh, and there's lots of lots of work to be done in in, in this year for for 7.5 and and DNN next. So I'm I'm certain that our numbers are going to continue to uh, to go up and up over the next couple of months. So awesome. All right. Well, um, I guess it's time to sign off then at this point. Awesome. Uh, cool. Thank you. Sure to see you guys go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of us just got here. I mean, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> hey, I'm bringing in somebody that's not currently on DNN. Just saying. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> as, long as, as long as you're carrying your weight, Will. <laughs> well, thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, if you have any additional questions, feel free to put them in the uh, comments of the video once it's posted. I'll get the blog post up for this hopefully tomorrow, and as well as the event for next month uh, uh, later this week. Uh, but uh, thank you everybody for participating. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye.